In 2024, scientists unveiled the face of a human who lived an astonishing 300,000 years ago, shattering long-held beliefs about the origins of our species. Found in Morocco's Jebel Irhud region, the remains included a skull that revealed features eerily familiar, flat cheeks, smaller teeth, and a modern-looking face. Yet, the skull's robust ancient structure hinted at a much earlier version of Homo sapiens, rewriting the timeline of human evolution by 100,000 years. But how did this ancient individual look so much like us? And what does this mean for the cradle of humankind? To find answers, we must journey back to where this incredible story begins. In 2011, the story of human origins took an unexpected twist. Deep in South Africa's cradle of humankind, researchers unearthed the ancient remains of two hominins that challenged everything we thought we knew about the journey from our ape-like ancestors to modern humans. These fossils, found in a collapsed cave system near Johannesburg, belong to a species called Australopithecus sediba, and they were estimated to be 1.9 million years old. What made these fossils so remarkable? It wasn't just their age. It was their features, a mix of primitive traits that belonged to earlier hominins and surprising advancements that seemed almost human. Scientists quickly began to wonder, could A. Sediba be the missing link between our genus, Homo, and the ape-like creatures that came before us? The fossils belonged to two individuals, an adult female and a juvenile male, possibly her son. The discovery was a stroke of luck. Both had died together, likely in a tragic accident that saw them trapped in a cave and washed into a pool. There, their remains, along with those of other animals, were preserved in sediments for nearly two million years. This preservation was so extraordinary that scientists could study their bones in incredible detail. One of the first things researchers noticed was the shape of their brains. By creating virtual models of the juvenile male skull using advanced X-ray scans, scientists estimated that an adult A. sediba had a brain roughly the size of a grapefruit, or 440 cubic centimeters. That's smaller than many earlier hominins, including the famous Lucy of Australopithecus afarensis, who lived 3.2 million years ago. But here's the twist. A. sediba's brain was shaped more like a human's, especially at the front. Could this suggest the beginnings of the brain reorganization that would lead to humans? Their pelvises also raised eyebrows. The adult female had a short, broad pelvis, much like ours. This was surprising because conventional wisdom suggested that modern pelvic shapes evolved to accommodate babies with large heads. But A. sediba had a modern pelvis and a small brain. Clearly, something else was driving this change. Then there was the hand. The female's right hand was almost complete, and it looked startlingly human. Her fingers were shorter, and her thumb was longer compared to apes, giving her an incredible grip. Yet the powerful muscles in her hands hinted she also spent a lot of time climbing trees. Imagine that. A creature capable of climbing as gracefully as an ape, but with the dexterity to manipulate tools. This combination suggested that A. sediba might have been on the verge of developing the tool-making abilities we associate with later humans. The feet told another fascinating story. While the ankle joint and some aspects of the foot were human-like, A. sediba still had an ape-like heel. This would have given them a unique gait, perhaps somewhere between walking upright and moving through trees. Their movement wasn't as smooth as ours, but it was an important step toward the fully upright posture we take for granted. Every feature of these fossils seemed to raise more questions than answers. Could this species really be on the direct path to modern humans? If so, it might push aside other candidates like Homo habilis or Homo rudolphinus. For a while, the evidence seemed compelling, but then, just a few years later, in 2015, another discovery shook the timeline of human evolution again. This time, the setting was the Afar region of Ethiopia, not far from where the iconic Lucy was discovered in the 1970s. Researchers unearthed something even older, a 2.8 million year old jawbone with five teeth. At first glance, it looked like another Australopithecus fossil, but the teeth were different, smaller, more delicate. These features were distinctly human. This jawbone, found by Ethiopian student Chalachu Sayum, is now considered one of the oldest fossils linked to our genus Homo. 
the discovery pushed back the origins of humans by an astonishing 400,000 years. It suggested that the transition from tree-dwelling primates to upright walkers began much earlier than scientists had believed. The conditions surrounding this discovery also offered clues about why this transition might have happened. Fossilized plants and animals found in the same area indicated that the once lush forested region was transforming into open grasslands. As the trees disappeared, early human ancestors may have been forced to adapt to life on the ground. Walking upright, developing tools, and using their brains in new ways became critical for survival. But what about Lucy? For years, she and her kind, Australopithecus afarensis, were thought to be direct ancestors to humans. Now, scientists began to wonder, could Lucy's species have evolved into the very first humans, or was A. sediba a closer match? The timeline became even murkier when experts realized there were likely several species of hominins living in Africa around the same time. It wasn't a straight line from one species to the next, but rather a tangled web of evolution, with different groups developing human-like traits independently. As one scientist put it, it's as if nature was experimenting with different versions of humanity. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Ethiopian jawbone discovery was its connection to climate change. With the environment shifting from forest to grasslands, these early humans had to evolve quickly to survive. Smaller teeth and jaws meant they were eating softer foods, possibly processed with primitive tools. Bigger brains helped them to adapt to a rapidly changing world. Could climate have been the ultimate force driving human evolution? The discoveries in South Africa and Ethiopia are two pieces of a much larger puzzle. The search for humanity's origins took another leap forward in 2019 with a groundbreaking discovery in Ethiopia. This time, researchers unearthed the skull of Australopithecus anamensis, a hominin species that lived an astonishing 3.8 million years ago. Known as MRD, the skull provided the clearest look yet at a species that existed even earlier than the famous Lucy. Imagine that, a face from nearly 4 million years ago, now reconstructed and brought to life. Before MRD, A. anamensis was something of a mystery. Paleontologists only had fragments to work with, some teeth, a few limb bones, and pieces of skulls. Then came MRD, a nearly complete cranium that revealed so much more. This was an individual who lived at a time when early humans were transitioning from life in the trees to walking upright on the ground. His brain was small, just a quarter the size of ours. But his jaw and cheekbones were already adapting to life as a ground-dwelling forager, chewing tough plants to survive in a changing landscape. The dating of MRD also introduced a surprise. It turned out that A. anamensis and Lucy species, A. afarensis, overlapped in time for at least 100,000 years. Think about that. For a while, two closely related species were coexisting, possibly even competing for resources. This discovery shattered the old idea that evolution was a straight line, with one species replacing another. Instead, it painted a picture of branching paths, with multiple species evolving side by side. But what did these ancient landscapes look like? Fossilized pollen and plant remains near MRD's skull tell us he likely lived by a river or lake, surrounded by trees and shrubs. The area wasn't a dense jungle or a barren savanna, but something in between. A place where survival meant adapting to an ever-shifting environment. Did A. anamensis thrive because of its ability to adapt, or was it just one of many species trying to find its niche? Fast forward to 2023, and another face from the past made headlines, this time much closer to modern humans. Scientists reconstructed the face of Zlati Kun, a woman who lived around 45,000 years ago in what is now Chechia. Her skull had been discovered decades earlier, but it wasn't until recent advances in technology that researchers could bring her features to life. Using 3D models and comparisons with modern human skulls, they created a hauntingly lifelike image of a woman with dark, curly hair and a strong jawline. Zlati Kun wasn't just any early human. She was among the first Homo sapiens to migrate into Eurasia from Africa. Her DNA revealed traces of Neanderthal ancestry, showing that interbreeding between species had already begun. But here's the kicker. 
Her genetic line didn't survive. Her population left no trace in modern humans, suggesting they were a part of an early wave of migration that eventually disappeared. What happened to them? Did they succumb to changing climates or competition from other groups? As fascinating as Zlati Kun's story is, it pales in comparison to the revelations of 2024. That year, scientists unveiled the reconstructed face of a human who lived 300,000 years ago, based on remains found in Morocco at a site called Jebel Irhud. This discovery pushed back the origins of Homo sapiens by a staggering 100,000 years, rewriting the timeline of our species. For decades, researchers believed that modern humans emerged in East Africa about 200,000 years ago. The Jebel Irhud fossils prove that our ancestors were already spreading across Africa much earlier than that. The reconstruction of the Jebel Irhud individual revealed a face both familiar and alien. The features were strikingly modern. Flat face, smaller teeth, but the skull retained an archaic shape, with a larger brain case and a more robust structure. This blend of traits suggested that early Homo sapiens didn't emerge in one place. Instead, our species likely evolved across the entire African continent, with populations intermixing over tens of thousands of years. The Jebel Irhud site also offered tantalizing clues about how these ancient humans lived. Alongside the fossils, researchers found stone tools and animal bones, evidence of a thriving community that hunted, gathered, and adapted to its surroundings. This wasn't a cradle of humanity in the traditional sense. It was part of a broader mosaic where different groups of early humans were experimenting with survival strategies and ways of life. What do all these discoveries have in common? They show us that human evolution wasn't linear or predictable. It was messy, with twists, turns, and dead ends. From the small-brained Australopithecus anamensis to the robust Lati Kun and the adaptable Jebel Irhud populations, each discovery adds a new piece to the puzzle. But even with all this evidence, so many questions remain. What drove these changes? How did different populations interact? And what other secrets lie hidden in the Earth, waiting to be uncovered? Ah, that's the beauty of our story. It's still unfolding. If you enjoyed this dive into humanity's ancient past, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can join us the next time we uncover even more incredible discoveries. We'll see you then.